What's up, YouTube? Salvoj here. Welcome back to another reaction video. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. New group to the channel. Later on, I think they added Young. I think. I still have to look into that a little further. But anyways, this is a VIP Patreon request from Kona. Now, to clarify here. Now this, this song, there's a theme with these two songs. Ohio is a rock and roll classic about the Kent State shooting in 1970, which I know nothing about, I have to admit. So Chrissy Hind from The Pretenders was a student at Kent State and was present on campus while it was happening. So later on, we will get to a song from The Pretenders in a few days, but these are intertwined in that sense that this song is about that particular event whom which a member from the pretenders was at all right so now this song is called ohio this is a protest song and counterculture anthem written and composed by neil young in reaction to the kent state shootings of 1970 it is performed, of course, by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. It was released as a single, backed with Stephen Stills' Find the Cost of Freedom, peaking at number 14 on the Hot 100 and number 16 in Canada. Although live versions of Ohio and Find the Cost of Freedom were included on the group's 1971 double album, Four Way Street, the studio versions of both songs did not appear on an LP until the group's compilation. So far, it was released in 1974. I see. This is also on a compilation album from Neil Young in 1977 called Decade and Greatest Hits in 2004. So, that's the song. Crosby, so, yeah, I've this this group keeps popping up not keeps a few times i should say on patreon folk rock super group made up of david crosby stephen stills and graham nash and later on neil young so let's see when joined by the canadian singer neil all right so yeah there we go then they add and when did that when did that happen I, i'm not sure but they are noted for their intricate vocal harmonies and lasting influence on American music and culture, as well as their political activism and often tumultuous interpersonal relationships. All right. I think I'm ready to listen to this song. Let's get into it. Here we go.
soldiers and Nixon's coming. We're finally on our own. This summer I hear the drumming. Or dead in Ohio. 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 This. Whoever put this video together with the song, they did a pretty good job. They lined up what they what lyrics they could with with images uh, in the video, and this image in particular right here gave me chills. Yeah, that was that was moving for sure. So this was 1970, 1970. So it does have some really like for me. So when I listen to rock and like classic rock, I have like my initial impression of it and what I think it sounds like. And I'm not going to I'm not going to lie, guys. A lot of it I compare to Led Zeppelin. That was like the that was a lot of classic rock and rock and roll from Led Zeppelin that I heard, you know, a couple years ago, like all at once, along with a few others that had that really classic sound. And this is what that sounds like. So I'm comparing it to songs from artists that were that i was listening to religiously like two years ago and they have a lot of elements of that classic rock sound that i, I enjoy quite a bit here and um the harmonies were good as well between all of them i enjoyed the percussion too it's very distinct hard sounding crisp drums now i want to do a little deeper look into the song all right if you feel inclined to stick around and read this with me, that's great. But other than that, I do want to say thank you for watching my reaction and listening to the song with me, Ohio. All right, let's see here. Ohio. So this is about the events of May 4th, 1970, when the U.S. National Guard shot four unarmed students. Okay, I didn't know it was the National Guard. Tragedy at Kent, cover photo of a wounded student lying on the ground. When Neil Young read the story and saw the photos, the song came to him. He was silent for a long time, then picked up his guitar, and 20 minutes later had this song his bandmates David Crosby recalled. Crosby summoned the other members of the group, and they recorded on May 21st. They had it pressed right away. Ohio was released June 4th, a month after the shootings. Kent State shootings had a profound effect on some of the students who later became prominent musicians. Chrissy Hind was a student at the time and eventually formed the Pretenders. Mark Mothersbaugh and Jerry Cassell were also on campus and after the shootings they developed the band Devo. I'm probably butchering a lot of these names, I apologize. Based on the concept of the evolution, so that's probably Devo then, meaning the human race was regressing. Sometimes it feels like that, doesn't it? So Cassell said, it refocused me entirely. I don't think I would have done Devo without it. It was deciding, the deciding factor that made me live and breathe this idea and make it happen. In Chrissy Hines' case, I'm sure it was very powerful. It was a very powerful single event that was traumatic enough to form her sensibility and account for a lot of her anger. Mothersboro added, it was the first time I'd heard a song about something I'd been a participant in. It affected us. It was part of our life. A tin soldier is a toy soldier, mindlessly controlled by its own owner. In this song, Young listens or Young likens the National Guard troops to tin soldiers controlled by Nixon. I did. I did notice that reference. So I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna pause and read, and I'm gonna summarize it. All right, so the first paragraph explains how it was an expansion. They were protesting the expansion of the Vietnam War into Cambodia, and nobody knew at the time. It was kind of like an overnight thing. The whole nation found out at once without an act of Congress, without any law or anything like that, and she calls it unconstitutional, Jerry Cassell, that is. So we were out there at noon, about 3,500 students at Kent State, at Kent State were out there. The governor, who was certainly a pro-war kind of guy, Governor Rhodes, had placed the National Guard inside the heating plant of the school the night before, anticipating that it would happen when the students found out, anticipating what would happen when the students found out about Cambodia. Not only did he do that, but he waited until about 9 a.m. on May 4th to, to declare it martial law, which suspends all First Amendment, Amendment rights of the Constitution, meaning that any assembly is automatically illegal. You're automatically committing a crime. So all those people out there, um, they got tear gas thrown at them. They were told they were all going to jail. A lot of them were choking and coughing, and most of them were about 100 yards away from anybody with guns, though. Oh my gosh. So listen to this. Nobody believed 
that the guns were actually loaded with ammo. They just suddenly formed a row. The first one knelt and the second one stood and they just shot right into the crowd, shot at all of us down the hill at all of us. The worst thing about it is that two of the four students killed weren't even part of the demonstration. They wanted nothing to do with it. They just came out of class from the journalism building. And at the time they were going, you know, one of them was going to their next class and they were looking at the protest, seeing what was going on and they died. The bullets just went everywhere. It was like a scattergun approach, like shooting geese. A lot of the bullets went over the heads of the protesters and kept going straight down the hill. One of the kids that's paralyzed for life was getting into his car to leave campus after the after his class and he got shot in the back. He was at least 200 yards away and wanted nothing to do with what was going on. It was shocking. It pretty much knocked any hippie that I had left in me right out of me that day. So, whoa. So, of course, the government and the press tried to lie about what, was, what happened. I mean, surprise. Uh, so, I had no idea that this even happened. This is absolutely ridiculous. 18, 19 year old kids. They're not even participating in what's going on and their life's gone. I don't even know what to say. I mean, this is, this is insane, but it's the reality. Unfortunately, what happens and I'm just in shock. I didn't, I've never heard of this. Random people dying because the National Guard decides that they're going to just start shooting into a crowd of students. Jesus. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks uh, to Kona for showing me this song and introducing me to this band. That's quite the uh, introduction, for sure. I do really, I will say this, I really like the way that they sound. It just has a classic rock and roll sound. I'm excited to listen to some more for sure, which I will do soon. Catch you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.